start with that. That would be appropriate, I would think. So I'll, I'll pose this to you, Michael. Uh, you had shot some of George's films before Day of the Dead. Yes. And I know that the atmosphere being in that cave was pretty harsh. What was that like dealing from a technical standpoint, shooting a film down there? Every day was ground zero, basically. We had, uh, you know, when the lights went out in the, in the cave, for instance, it was lights out. We had nothing to the bare minimum in terms of work lights. So that was an enormous challenge just uh, in terms of logistics, uh, getting uh, generators and power into that uh, that cave just to shoot it. Um, took a, a much larger crew than we were ever uh, accustomed to in terms of the grips and electrics. Uh, and uh, aside from that, we had a dust situation there which caused havoc with the cameras and so forth. So uh, a great environment once we were able to model the whole interior cave. It was gorgeous, but all that time and effort and equipment leading up to that was incredible, incredible. And one of the other questions I wanted to ask you, Mark, mm -hmm. Mark, as you guys know, was beef treats in the film, uh, which in a lot of aspects, you have to go through hell to be in a, a makeup constantly. What was that like for you? Um, it was hell. No, it was <laughs> not. It, it, was, um, it was uncomfortable because the, the, the latex mask um, uh, that I had on that they were, that they were using, um, the, the, um, the glue would come off the spirit comes I guess they were using. And, it, and we kept having to um, re-glue my lip, and it would fall. And it was really annoying because it was just this horrible feeling. Like um, once I had it on, it wasn't too bad. Once I once I had the latex on, it was about the um, uh, the makeup was about two and a half hours. And I um, I remember working on the first day and then going to lunch, and everybody was oh. The, the, but I had the, the lip kept coming off, especially as I was, as I was eating. The lip, kept, the, the lip of the uh, latex mask would come off, and then food would fall in. It was, just, it was, it was unbelievably uncomfortable. Man. Uh, and then I have the story when I came back the first day I shot them, the first day of shooting, and um, when I came back, uh, we went over. I think we went over time. And when I came back to the special effects room where Tom Savini and Greg Nicotero. They weren't there, and um, they, had, they had closed the room. Wow. They had left for the day. I guess you know whatever it was five o'clock or something. I don't know. So I had all this makeup, on, and I had no way of getting that off. Or the knowledge. So I, I drove home. Did you ever get it on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Mark is making a little bit of light on that, but two and a half hours, if you can imagine, two and a half hours being prepped. Just to get to the stage, we had to go out, and then the constant futzing once you're on set. I mean, it's yeah. They kept, they from, kept, from an actor standpoint, it's a difficult chore, you know. Yeah, they kept having to. But it wasn't just the lip; it was really having all other things too. But that two and a half hours of time, I just uh, yeah, it's amazing, an amazing period of time. And I'm assuming everybody in here is very familiar with Day of the Dead. If you remember the movie, John is in a scene in the movie where Captain Rhodes is just going completely berserk. <laughs> I want to know what's it like as an actor to be in that room with all of that unfolding? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mm, you're going to ask me about how do you do this? I, I don't know. I think, you know, the key really is, I mean, for most actors, I think, is, um, you know, you, you just. You just do what you have to do. You you know you know what the scene is about. You understand the circumstances of the scene, and you just you know you have to be involved on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And um, and Joe Pilato is scary enough. On his own. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you know you give him a weapon, and uh, all hell breaks loose. Um, so. Uh, I'm I'm not sure exactly how to answer that, you know, but um, it certainly had an impact. I, I think the death of Ted Fisher had had quite an impact and um, was quite a surprise. You know, one being one of the few kind of empathetic characters in there, other than the primary empathetic character, which was Bob, who I thought, by the way, Howard Sherman. I wish I haven't I haven't seen or talked to him since the shooting. Um, but I would watch his performance. I thought his 
transformation of that sure. zombie was nothing, yeah, nothing short of extraordinary. I, I would watch him on a daily basis do what he does, you know, and I thought he was absolutely amazing in that movie. Yeah, you know? too. yeah. absolutely. So, um, I dodged that question, I thought. <laughs> 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 Any actor's credit on set, if you can imagine, the, the, the ultimate distractions with the, the crew ambling about and concentrating on their own efforts, and all the while you're trying to work on a role and perform, you know. Uh, unlike theater, where you have a focus on the audience and you're before them. Uh, on a film set, everything is a distraction. You know, the lights, and the people moving about, the cables behind the camera, and the camera itself, and a focus puller, and, you know, it's an incredible chore. I mean, you know, and when you see a performance like John's, you realize, wow, the guy can insulate himself from all that distraction. Yeah, you do have to do that. I mean, there's a certain amount of concentration. That's how you do it, certainly. It's, it's, incredible. it's, it's incredible. It is necessary. Another question I have for you about yes. Day of the Dead was, in that film, you had probably, like, the most unique character because of the fact that, like, the character that Laurie Cardell plays is she's the hero of the film. But a lot of her opinions in the movie are totally skewered. And Joe Pilato in the movie, Captain Rhodes, is the biggest asshole you will ever see in anything. <laughs> but he's right about what he's preaching in the movie. Sure. John's character, though, is the only one in the entire film that kind of empathizes with everyone. It's like, well, you got to understand, like, you know, in the scenes whenever you're talking about the military men. Right. You're like, well, they're, it's not safe to be around them, but at the same time, it's like you kind of understand why they're like that. They're military men. Right. What was it like for you to be the one character that was basically, if not the voice of reason for everyone? Mm. Did you look at it that way, or did you just kind of play it right off the page? I, well, that's always where it starts, is on the page, you know? Um, and, and that's what you try to, that's what you try to do. That's where the action is. It's on the page. If you understand the story, if you understand the, the text and what it means, um, and you go from there. Um, you keep asking me what it's like, and, uh, <laughs> what it's like is for me, you know, um, it's my job. It's my job to do what I'm supposed to do every moment that I'm in front of a camera. And uh, that's always what any decent actor is going to attempt to do. Mm -hmm. You take it from the page, you understand the story, um, you understand the process in terms of thought process, and you go, you know, and uh, honestly that's, that's not an answer that people necessarily want to hear, but that's the truth of it. There you go. There you have it. And a question for you, Mark. Sure. Uh, he mentioned Howard Sherman's performance as well in the film, and right. you were kind of in the same way as him. You're not given a lot of lines or anything like that to work with, so you have to convey something in a short period of time with very little to work with. How did you approach that and what did you want to get across through that character? Um, well, one thing I remember, uh, George gave me a lot of leeway too, and I, the, the one thing I do remember um, uh, was being uh, chained to that wall and I knew that, um, uh, that you, you were leaving the room and I, and I, um, I just thought, you know, we haven't seen, never seen a zombie that had shed any fear or any apprehension. And when you left the room and, and, uh, and turned out the lights, I, I, I don't know, it just came sort of naturally that I, that I was sort of fearful. Because yeah, I, I, I think you were the first zombie. I know a lot of people look at Bub as being the first, like, sympathetic zombie. But I always looked at, at Mark's character as the very first zombie ever in a Romero film that you're supposed to kind of like, like with the chains and everything, you're kind of like, you know, like, let me free, I shouldn't be locked up here. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the first time in any Romero dead film that that was shown like that. And I think you did a wonderful job. I know, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, he really allowed me to do, it wasn't, it wasn't written like that. I mean, it allowed me to do what I wanted. And I just thought, this would be, I thought it would just, I just picked, the, you know, I just made a choice. I just, uh, Sort of the fear and apprehension of being in the dark and almost like, and the repercussion of him punishing me by turning out the, you know, turning out the lights. Richard Liberty turned out the lights as he left and said, you know, 
it, almost like you know you're a bad you've been a bad boy. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is another, this, this is the last question I have about Day of the Dead, and this is, I'm going to pose this to all three of you because unfortunately he's no longer with us. What was Richard Liberty like to work with? Because I, every, the stuff that I've seen from him, he's an outstanding actor, and it's a shame that we lost him so early, but all three of you had the chance to work with him. Yeah, very sweet, kind, uh, generous man, and sweet, kind, generous actor. As John talked about, there's the preparation being uh, on the page with the, uh, with the screenplay. Uh, he was one of those kind of individuals who was always prepared, always prepared. And the, the takes almost came magically. I mean, George had some wonderful choices because he was prepared, gave him range, gave him dimension on that page. And, uh, yeah, real pro. Real yeah, pro. That, I mean, that, that, that's really the key, you know, honestly, for most of us that, that do act is that um, uh, you have to you have to understand that story and you have to understand that moment that you're involved in and then you make choices and offer choices through your performance so that a director and a cinematographer can look at it and say okay I'm gonna I can use this piece I can use this piece because you know it's going to be edited and put put together but so you offer up as many possibilities for them to have a choice to get a good take or and that's why they have more than one take generally and you know unless we're shooting like really low budget yeah. uh, where, you know you have but an I always opportunity. thought that was part of George's genius too yeah. that, that in terms of the, the length and breadth of his takes were typically long and he would experiment and he'd do numerous takes and that was his own kind of genius where he could look at different forms and ways and because he's a great editor also it's not going to be a good director yeah um, he could build those choices early in the game for himself, right on set, you know. So. Okay, I'm going to move on a little bit because I think this is an extremely important horror film, especially when you're talking about the world of Romero, which is the one that John stars in, Martin. Um, the reason why I think that film's so important to the whole lexicon of Romero films is because a lot of the people, the key people anyways, that he worked with throughout his prime of films, you know, did Dawn of the Dead, Knight Riders, Creepshow, started on that film. And it started with you two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll pose this one first to you, Michael. What was it like to get behind the camera for the first time on that film? Well, that was quite, actually quite an accident. I began as a sound recordist. And we were actually setting up one of the very first shots in Martin, which was along the, the B&O trailway there. And um, for some reason, George said, same man, would you like to shoot? And I said, absolutely, I'd be honored. Yes, ma'am. You know, I thought he meant this one particular shot near the railroad tracks. Well, he let me keep shooting from that point on. And I thought, wow, he's bestowed this upon me because, you know, uh, of some sort of trust, whatever. So I, mean, I was just totally honored, enamored by the fact that I could now shoot for George, you know, the maestro. He was the maestro. Yeah. So that's how it all began, just quite on, by accident. I <coughs>